All right, welcome back in. Hope you're doing well. Hope summer is treating you very well. Uh, major nerd alert ahead. I've got numbers all over the board. I'm even going to add a few more here to another column in a second. We're talking about the 2021 offseason for the Kansas City Chiefs. That's not this offseason that we just finished. It's not the 2020 offseason. It's two seasons from now. The reason for that, because a lot of you have asked me about Patrick Mahomes, Chris Jones, Tyreek Keel. What happens if we sign all three? Can we sign all three? And what happens if we do? So that's the point of this video. If you sign Patrick Mahomes, sign Chris Hill, uh, Jones, sign Tyreek Hill, what happens in 2021? What do our numbers look like? And, and the simple answer is you can sign all three of them, but it changes the picture drastically. We're going to look at that today. A lot of intelligent viewers have asked us these questions, a lot of in-depth questions, and this is a partial attempt not to answer all the questions, but to answer some of those here today for the Kansas City Chiefs. I want to start with this right here. Salary cap number in 2021 is projected to be about $210 million. Now, nobody knows what that's going to be. Not the Players Union, not the NFL front office. Nobody knows exactly what it's going to be. For today, I'm assuming that the salary cap is going to continue to grow at the same pace that has for basically the past decade, more or less. And I'm going to assume that $210 million will be your cap number for 2021. That's a major assumption for this reason. 2021 is going to be the first year after the, uh, the current collective bargaining agreement runs out, which means there may not be a collective bargaining agreement by the time it's time to start playing the 2021 season. You could see the, uh, the entire 2021 season canceled. I don't think that's going to be the case. I think there's too much money at stake, but you could. It's happened before in other leagues. You could also see the start of the season delayed if they're trying to tie up all the last minute details and really get a deal put together. Or you could even see some of the early part of the season cancel. We've seen that before recently in the NFL, somewhat recently. Nobody really knows what's going to happen with that. We don't know how much the players union and the NFL owners are going to disagree and clash, how much they're going to butt heads. We know they're going to butt heads some, we just don't know how much. So it's a major assumption to even say what the numbers are going to look like in 2021. But for today's purposes, $210 million is what I'm going with, and I think that's a reasonably safe number for now. I want to drop all the way to the bottom. $35 million. This is about, give or take, how much money the Chiefs will have to pay their bottom 35 players, which is pretty normal for all NFL teams. This is those players who are still on rookie contracts or guys who are just signed off the street. By and large, they make anywhere from a little over the NFL minimum that year of $600,000 up to about a million and a half, two million dollars on average. So it comes out to about a million dollars a player. This isn't necessarily your worst players because as we speak, heading into the 2019 season, Chris Jones and Tyreek Hill are on rookie deals and they're two of the best players on your team. So even though they're just making little bitty money this year, they're still two of the better players on your team and they would kind of sort of fall into this poor category or maybe pushing into the middle class since they're at the tail end of their rookie deals. But $35 million, this number is pretty much a fixed number. You're not going to get away from this number. The only way to get away from this number, and nobody would ever do this, is to trade away all of your draft picks and just sign players off the street for the NFL minimum of about $600,000 a season, depending on the year, but nobody's going to do that. So these players, 35 players, making about a million dollars each, $35 million. That leaves two other groups for all NFL teams. You've got the wealthy seven, eight, nine, ten players, and then you've got whatever's left for whatever players are left in the middle. Okay, and this is kind of a forgotten group. This is a really important group, this middle class. For the Kansas City Chiefs in 2021, I'm projecting that they'll have $121 million committed to nine players. Now, I want to say why I'm using the word projected. I'm assuming that they've signed Chris Jones to a deal because that's the point of the video. Now, I don't know that they're going to be able to reach an agreement with Chris Jones. I don't know that they aren't going to franchise him next year and then trade him. I don't know that they're not going to trade him, uh, franchise him in 2020 and then just release him the year after. They may not be able to come to an agreement, but we'll find out. This video is going to assume, based on what we're hearing from fans trying to sign all three players, this video is going to assume that Chris Jones has signed the deal and his cap number for that season would be $18 million. If he were to sign a deal, that's a very fair number, both for Chris Jones and for the team, in terms of what he could get on the market. It may not be a fair number in order for the Chiefs to try to win and compete for Super Bowls, 
but it's a very fair number according to what he could probably get on the market, $18 million during the, possibly the second year of his contract. So we'll assume that. We'll also assume that Tyreek Hill, and this is a big assumption, that Tyreek Hill has managed to sign a deal with the Chiefs at $10 million for that second season, uh, probably a short contract. Now, I don't know. Tyreek Hill and his agent may not do that. The Chiefs may have decided they don't want to sign Tyreek Hill to any kind of a long-term contract at all, and he could already be gone. But since we're trying to figure out how to keep all three players on the team, we're going to assume that Tyreek Hill has agreed to maybe a two-year deal or a three-year deal where he's making 10 or $11 million a season. This would be year two of that deal. And so I'm projecting here $10 million for him, 18 for him. Then you have these other seven guys, Frank Clark, Tyron Matthew, guys you've just signed, would be making 24 and 19 and $0.7 million that season. Sammy Watkins should be gone by then. I think the Chiefs possibly will release him after 2020. Even if they don't, if they keep him on the roster for 2020, he's not under contract for 2021. So by the time you get to the 2021 season, he is gone, unquestionably. You also have Eric Fisher making $11.5 million at left tackle. Anthony Hitchens probably still on the roster at that point, making $9.3 million that season. Mitchell Schwartz over at the right tackle spot, making $10 million that season. Travis Kelsey, your all-world tight end, making 8.8, .8, which is an absolute steal. And then, of course, Dr. LDT making $9.3 million at guard. What's really going to change, and this is why 2021 is so important to look ahead. All good general managers of all sports will do this. You have to look ahead two years, three years down the road and see where your decisions are taking you. You can't just assume that everything's going to work out. You have to look ahead and they'll be doing this. 2021 is where the, for the first time you would start to really feel the impact of all three major deals, Jones, Hill, Mahomes. The only trouble is Mahomes at that point is not going to be making $5.2 million. If the Chiefs sign him to a brand new deal, he'll probably be making $30 million that season. If they can't reach a long-term deal with him and they just franchise him, he's still probably going to be sitting at $30 million. And that's a whopper of a number. It's probably going to be the largest NFL contract that has ever been signed up to that point, unless Patrick Mahomes is just willing to give the Chiefs a discount. And maybe he is. We'll find that out over the next offseason or two. No matter what, though, if Mahomes is on the Chiefs that season, his cap number is going to be somewhere around $30 million. Where are they going to find this kind of money? Well, today we're going to look for it. How are they going to find this kind of money? The quickest way to do it, it's not the best way, but it's the quickest, is to just straight up pay him the money out of this middle class allotment. Okay. So in other words, the $54 million that we have left over, and this is always left over for the middle class. This number changes, but the middle class always basically gets signed last. These players get signed very quickly because they're on rookie contracts that are already kind of agreed upon by the NFL and the NFL Players Association. These players get signed next because they're the best players and they make the most money. What you have left over, and in the Kansas City Chiefs case, is this, $54 million. After you've paid these seven players, and Jones and Hill. Now let's tack in $30 million for Patrick Mahomes. Could be more, could be less. We're going with $30 million right now. That's pretty reasonable for what I think you'll see out of Mahomes. That's going to add to this number right here. Instead of nine players, we're going to put 10 players up there in the wealthy class. Instead of $121 million, let's just make it $150 million. That's a whopping number. That is a massively huge number to be paying the top 10 players on your team. The NFL works differently than Major League Baseball, but especially different than the NBA. In the NBA, you have to have a couple of great players in order to compete for a championship. In the NFL, you've got to have good players at most positions, and you've got to have some depth. And so to be paying the top 10 players on your team, no matter how good they are, $150 million out of a $210 million cap space is insane. But let's take a look at it and just take a look at that path and see where that takes us. Basically what that does, the middle class then would shrink from nine players to eight players. 
and the amount of money left over available to sign those guys would shrink now from $54 million down to $25 million, which basically for eight players is $3 million a player. And basically what happens at that point is there is no middle class. They just get swallowed and shrunk into this lower 35, which basically means you have 10 players making $150 million and you have 43 players making $60 million. Which basically means you have 10 really good players and then you have 43 players who are largely on rookie deals, undrafted rookie free agents, and just guys signed in off the street. Not veteran guys, not guys who know how to play, guys who really shouldn't be starting at all in the NFL, and guys who shouldn't even be on the NFL roster are now filling out a massive portion because that's all the money you have left for them because we've decided to give this much money to these 10 players. Now, for most of you, and for me, and for NFL general managers everywhere, this is unacceptable. We just can't do this. We know we can't win this way. So, let's find the money somewhere else. Instead of taking it from the middle class, instead of just giving the money straight to Patrick Mahomes out of the middle class allotment, let's go back up here to the wealthy people. Let's go back and find somebody. I know someone right now is saying, well, why don't you just restructure contracts? Listen, you, you can restructure contracts, but it means two things. Number one, it means that you're just kicking the can down the road for some of these players for the next season, the following season. It means some players you are given a higher cap number two over the next two or three seasons. It also means you're less likely to be able to trade or release those players because their guaranteed money has gone up, and so has the dead cap pit, which you have now put in place because you've restructured their contract. What it also means is when you decide to restructure contracts, you can get some money for 2021 that way. You can't find $30 million worth of restructures. You could probably find five, six, $8 million of restructured money, and that helps. But this $30 million is not going to be found in just restructuring contracts. Even if you could find it for 2021, when 2022 rolls around and he's sitting here at $35 million, and all of these players now have cap numbers that are higher, along with guaranteed and dead cap numbers that are higher, you have a mess. So restructuring really is not going to help you get to this $30 million hardly at all. What really needs to happen is some of these players have to go. Some of these top seven, top nine players have to go. For today's purposes, we're keeping Jones and Hill. That means some of these top seven players here, with Watkins already gone, somebody's got to go. We've got to find $30 million for just 2021 alone. So I want to go back to the, the cap hits for that season, and these are the dead cap hits for that season. Okay? So let's start computing that. For Frank Clark, 24.2 is his cap number for that season, minus 15.6. That's going to put him at about 8.6 is what you'd be saving that season. Watkins is already gone. Tyron Matthew, 19.7 minus a 4.9 dead cap hit. That's going to put you, if I'm counting right, at about $14.8 million that you would save. That's a big one right there. $14.8 million you would save simply by releasing Tyron Matthew. Eric Fisher, your starting left tackle. There's no dead cap pit on him at all. If you released him, you'd be saving 11.5. For Anthony Hitchens, probably would be y'all's leading candidate, I'm sure, for releasing. You, still, you could release him, absolutely, but you'd only be saving about $6.7 million, which helps, and I think will probably happen, but again, that's not a large number. Mitchell Schwartz, I don't think anybody's going to want to release him, but if you did, you'd be saving $6.2 million. For Travis Kelsey, I don't think anybody's interested in releasing Travis Kelsey even two seasons from now, but if you did, you would save $8.8 .8 million. And for Dr. LDT, if you wanted to release him, you'd be saving $7.3 million. Now, 
Let's talk about this for just a minute, and then we're done. In releasing these players and looking at the amount of money we're saving, we're assuming that the Kansas City Chiefs in the 2020 offseason don't restructure any of these contracts in order to make room for Tyreek Hill and Chris Jones. I think that's unlikely. I think what is very likely in the 2020 offseason, I think they're probably going to restructure Frank Clark or restructure Eric Fisher or Mitchell Schwartz or Travis Kelsey. I think they're likely to restructure probably at least two of these guys, if not three or four of these guys. And if they do, if they do restructure three or four of these guys, that means that you don't save as much money off of all these players. What's likely to happen is you're going to have about four of these guys that you could really save this money on, four or five of these players by the time 2021 rolls around. For instance, I doubt that they restructure Tyron Matthew, probably with an eye on releasing him in 21 and saving $15 million. $15 million, you would have had Tyron Matthew by that time for two seasons. Maybe he would have even led you to a Super Bowl victory by that time. Who knows? But you would have had him for two seasons. You release him, you save $15 million in cap space, and that right there alone is half of what you need to re-sign Patrick Mahomes for that season. Also, Eric Fisher. I don't think anybody wants to let Eric Fisher go, especially if he's continuing to be solid at left tackle. But if it means signing Patrick Mahomes, these are the decisions that you have to make. Somebody has to go. Either we lose all of our depth, all the depth on the team, either we lose all the depth on the team and all of those solid players who fill out solid roster spots from our middle class, or some of these top players have to go. There's no other way around it. Anthony Hitchens, we could save 6.7. Let's call it $7 million. 7 and 15, that's $22 million right there out of the 30 you need. So I don't think anybody's going to be too heartbroken if Matthew and Hitchens go two seasons from now. Some of you can say, why don't we just go ahead and release Hitchens right now? The dead cap hit is too high. It's going to be 2021 before the dead cap hit really drops enough to where it makes sense to release him. So I think Hitchens being gone, Matthew being gone, right there is most of the money you need, $22 million of it. You might from there could restructure your way to the rest of the $8 million. You might could dip $8 million into the middle class at that point, or you might could simply release another one of these players. And who knows, two seasons from now, if you've already won a Super Bowl, you might even be looking at some of these guys retiring. Dr. Laurent, he's already got a PhD, a medical PhD. He might be looking to retire. Travis Kelsey, who's playing like an all-pro right now, two seasons from now, maybe he's ready to retire. And this cap number just automatically opens up for you. So the, the, the money is there to be found, but decisions have to be made. You've got to decide at some point to let somebody go or to take a hit there at the middle part of the roster. So the Chiefs are in good shape. These things can be done. You can let these players go. One other thing that comes up is maybe we just shouldn't re-sign both of these guys. If this is going to create a log jam for us and we'd rather keep some of these other players, maybe we, we shouldn't re-sign Chris Jones. Maybe we shouldn't re-sign Tyreek Hill. I close with this. Over the past decade, and I've said this repeatedly on my videos, teams that have a top-heavy salary structure don't show up in the Super Bowl very often. Matter of fact, over the past decade, they don't show up at all. They don't even show up in the AFC or NFC title games. Teams that have a salary cap structure that is this top heavy. The teams we're seeing show up in the Super Bowl, show up in the AFC, NFC title games. They have a much more balanced structure between the upper wealthy class and the middle class. It's much, much closer than this massive gap. Matter of fact, it's much closer than the gap we started with, 121 versus 54 you'll see it much closer to something like 90 or $100 million for the rich group versus about $70 million for that middle class. Those are the teams that we're seeing winning over the past decade. Not saying you can't win with the top heavy structure, we're just saying we haven't seen that a lot. All right, there's a lot more to cover. We'll try to cover more of that as the months go on. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time. Have a great day. Goodbye.